So welcome back to the last talk of the day on the studio stage. And it's actually one talk that is split into two halves. So the first half, Stefan Brugmann will talk about Beyond Elasticsearch. And the second part of the same talk will be held by Sebastian Kurfürst. And uh, yeah. Yeah, an important notice is that right afterwards, uh, we got the NEOS award on the center stage. And please go directly there and do not uh, take any break after it because it will start very soon. So without further ado, welcome on stage, Stefan Brugmann. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, this is not full screen. Please press F11 or something. Um, yeah, who am I? I'm Stefan. I'm, I work at Jungformat Tech in Switzerland. And if you like Switzerland, um, come to us. We need more helping hands. <laughs> and today the topic is not Elasticsearch. Well, not fully, it's SYNC, an experimental Go-driven Elasticsearch replacement. But first, let's get the big picture. Um, why search and where? So, usually we talk about the website. And the website has a navigation. And sometimes a search. So the navigation is important because there we don't have any domain knowledge. So we are searching through the website about the keywords and learning something about the website itself and the content and the products and the search that I already know what I, I'm looking at. So I need to think about what I'm searching. So first, Please create a very good navigation, like a content structure and good place navigation that you understand. And second, create search itself. And here's a good statement. When websites prioritize search over navigation, users must invest cognitive effort to create queries and to deal with the weak implementations of the site search. And there are different search types. This is kind of technically. One is full text. And the second is faceted, where we enter some text, just the text. And in faceted, we have guided search. So we don't need to think about what we are searching for. We have drop downs to select from. So this is kind of a navigation, but it's still a search behind. And there are other use cases, um, which are more or less important for, for, for us developers. So one is filtering, and second is querying. Kind of, yeah, bad naming. Um, the first is we have a front end, we have data sets already in the front end, and basically we could filter in the front end with JavaScript. This is much uh, better performance than go to the back end, ask the indexer, and return a value, if it's not too many data, of course. But please have a look at Fuse.js. Um, with this uh, library, you can build even fuzzy search in front end with JavaScript. This is really nice. And the second is um, we have a backend code, and we need to load data fast. And if you have the uh, NEOS content repository and a lot of uh, data we need to query to, um, this is kind of expensive because you have a lot of database uh, queries, uh, maybe. And if you search with Elasticsearch or another index search, this is extremely fast. So the more nodes you have, the more, more expensive it is. So back to the main topic, 
Why Elasticsearch? Well, it's extremely flexible. It's extremely fast, and it delivers great results if you configured it correctly, of course. And now let's come to the downsides. So why not Elasticsearch, maybe? Um, it's complex. If you like to do it perfect, it's complex. And it's really hungry, hungry kind of memory. And it's still not like Google. So the, the client's understanding is um, we have full text search. So it needs to be as perfect as <laughs> Google is. So <coughs> let's talk about the hungry part. It's eating <laughs> memory like this, I think. <laughs> That's extremely hard. And there's an indexer that you need to create the index. And the indexer is eating memory, too. But there's a package called flow pack Elasticsearch content repository queue indexer. Not that handy, but very important. So this will create a lot of chunks, which can be processed over time. But if it's still eating memory like this, then please, please double check or maybe triple check that you have set the setting execute isolated true in the flow pack job queue package. This makes sure that the memory is freed after each job. If this not, not is set, the PHP garbage collection will not free up memory when you think it should do a lot of time. And now, do we need an alternative? Elasticsearch is good. Well, maybe you know the XKCD uh, comic. <laughs> Um, we have 14 competing standards, and yeah, let's create the one and only new, and now we have 15. And yes, I thought about that, but I was looking about a new technology, another technology which could make some parts of this situation simpler. And then I stumbled up uh, upon the Zinc. Zinc is a search engine that does full text indexing. It is lightweight and a lightweight alternative to Elasticsearch and runs using a fraction of resources. It uses Bludge as the underlying indexing library. This is the, the, the description on GitHub. Sounds good. So my goal was to create a simple, lightweight uh, package for small projects, not the big ones. And if you go with sync, you already get a nice UI to the data, which is pretty handy. And I needed to create an indexer again. So there's a small package uh, published tomorrow, um, which adds the indexing command. And you can just add an option Q, and we have done that too. If it purge and the list, that's all. And then I just reinvented the wheel again and again. So I created an basically the same indexer again as it already exists, and the same logic in configuration, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I came to this part querying infusion. This is in the official documentation of Elasticsearch now. And I thought, oh, man. I started with ill helpers, and then I thought, there's a shiny thing like called AFX. Let's try it out with AFX. So I created some node additions um, to create queries with AFX. You can add a term, a must term. Add a shoot match. Maybe we should add 
uh, another search, and if it's found in a title, we boost it. We add simple patination and execute that. Looks much more readable, I think. And basically, it just renders a JSON. Would work also for Elasticsearch itself. And now, let's build the search with this data. Um, we have, again, a simple loop over the result. We have the totals, the pagings. It's definitely a simple prototype. And now, does it work? How does it work? Well, the, the test set what set up is a DDEF container, web and DB, plus a Zinc container in Docker directly. And all of them are limited to a half CPU and 256, uh, not that many memory. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. On the upper left is the indexer, on the upper right is the index, the zinc, and we see the third line is zinc, which is using 30 to 40 me megabytes memory, and the big load is on the indexer itself. But this is enough. The most memory is used by the indexer. Looks good. And the simple search in the front end is, yes, OK, it's, it's simple, but it works. So what now? Please have a look at the package. And please, if you're interested in this topic, um, help me to create this to a final product. Thank you. And if you're, in, you're definitely interested, Zurich is a nice place. <laughs> and we are searching for all roles. Please contact me. <laughs> So this concludes the first part of this talk. And for the second part, here comes Sebastian Kurfürst. Yeah, please give him a warm welcome. Hi, everybody. So I'm so glad to be on this stage again. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And I'm going to talk about another approach to searching, which is uh, a package we've created, I think, in the last year, it's called Sandstorm Lightweight Elastic Search. Let's see if we get the slides here. No, we don't. <laughs> Let's see. Otherwise, I'll improvise a bit. I can give some context. So, probably, who has used uh, um, Flowpack Elastic Search CR adapter by now? Pretty much everybody, or most people, I guess, right? And actually, um, I have created this, this package uh, initially a long, long, long time ago, and I was having, I was doing some mistakes back then, or I, things I personally consider as, as things which I've learned in the meantime. And luckily, actually, uh, Daniel Lienert, um, who sadly cannot be here today, um, he has done most of the maintenance work since the initial creation of the package. And um, so I'm um, basically, I'm really, really happy on that. And what I'm trying to do here is actually a new um, idea how we can use the search. So let's see if we get the slides. Yeah, we'll see. Da, da, da. Ah, 60 Hertz. So if you're using any video stuff, make sure to set it to 50 Hertz and test that. Ah, here we go. You have some slides. Awesome. OK, so what did I want to do with this uh, package? Actually, 
The um, the main question, of course, is why not just use the already existing and Trident 2 Flowpack Elasticsearch CR adapter? Well, actually, you will use this package if you use the, the lightweight uh, uh, CR package because it is using this part for some stuff underneath the hood, but actually it exposes a completely new API on top of that. And as already said, um, the, the um, CR adapter has a few interesting assumptions, um, which I have been creating initially. So for instance, um, and, and I'm going to show through them. So what I wanted to do is actually a package which is really simple, really easy to operate. Um, I don't know who has had problems with these scripts which are embedded in the Elasticsearch runtime somewhere, trying to run that. Yeah, exactly, me too. So. <laughs> That was one pain point, for instance, I wanted to get rid of. Then a second thing, um, actually, in the CR adapter, we are actually indexing all the nodes and all the data. And um, because we want to use that also for reference uh, findings, for instance, and I wanted to simplify the problem to only index, cont uh, only index document nodes, so actually results which can appear on the results listing and not like anything else, which you have to filter down and shrink down and all these kind of things. So actually, this package only indexes uh, document nodes and, of course, the content also, but uh, pull up to the document node as you would expect. I'll show that in a bit. It's currently focused on batch indexing. Actually, I think it would work also with the with like automatic indexing, but I wanted to keep it simple for the start, so that's why I just implemented it for now. Um, and the query API, um, who has had problems with writing advanced queries in the Flowpack Elasticsearch package? <laughs> Yeah, me too, actually. Um, because uh, what we thought back then was, well, you know, let's create a really good abstraction. You don't need to learn Elasticsearch, and we can do all kind of fancy things. So we thought, oh, yeah, it's actually a cool idea to create this query result interface. And <laughs> I, I often struggle, and I, I'm like, OK, I want to just give me the Elasticsearch result, and I'm doing whatever I want with myself. And I have no clue why actually this works in the old package. It's I have to always look it up, despite creating it a long time ago myself. And th the last point, actually, this was done uh, for a customer project. Um, and it was sponsored by SolarWatt and 3M5 uh, for the new SolarWatt homepage. So really, really thank you to, to you guys. Um, and they had also the need that they had some external data sources. And that is also, I think, a really common case that you actually want to search through multiple data sources. And it actually, the problem with the Flowpack Elasticsearch adapter is that is this magic around the index aliases and when you switch them and how this works together. So actually, I see some people nodding. So <laughs> yeah, I also feel your pain. So actually, that's what I also tried to, to solve and make it more easily used. And also, I mean, you know, I also wanted to experiment with all, without any backwards compatibility concerns. So I'm really, really great, grateful for Daniel and all the others who have maintained the package in the meantime. But I personally really had the idea it was like a personal itch I've had for so a long time. Always I had to write uh, some search stuff. I was like, oh, I really want to <laughs> do it differently. And then finally I had some time to, to kickstart that. So actually that's what I already said. I wanted to fix some of the design mistakes. And just as an understanding, the main difference for indexing is actually um, like the CR adapter actually indexes every node one by one and then the full text is aggregated to the document node within Elasticsearch via Groovy scripting, and now it's called painless scripting. So just to illustrate then, if you have these three nodes, actually what is happening in the back with, with the Flowpack Elasticsearch CR adapter is first the document node is indexed, then the system says, well, I pretty much don't have any content. It indexes this, the title and these kind of things. Then uh, the first content node is indexed, and then there is a really complicated uh, script in Elasticsearch, sent to Elasticsearch, which basically also updates the document node on top and uh, aggregating all the content which is already known to Elasticsearch. So in this sense, it's just this one content node. <laughs> and then this is the second content node comes, and again, the same thing happens. So actually, the content on the document node is built up incrementally one by one. So actually, this needs like, I don't know, seven or eight queries to Elasticsearch to just build up content for one single page, and that's a, a huge pile of work. And it's also very, very complex. That's, that's the main problem with it. And um, 
um, I mean, the, my initial idea when designing that, I pretty much remember it, it was like, oh yeah, I can do this really, really cleverly, and we can save so much memory, you know, in PHP by just outsourcing this all to Elasticsearch, and Elasticsearch is so fast, you know, that was my thinking like seven years ago, I don't know how long this package exists. And I, I didn't realize that I made it such a complex idea actually by doing that. So, so what is actually Sandstorm Lightweight Elasticsearch doing? It is doing basically the same thing, but within PHP. So that means we just take all the content nodes of our document nodes which we want to use. We just you know, traverse that just using Flow Query really easily on via the Node API. And then we take these, this, this content data um, with all the text which we have, and then we index the one document node. So that's just a simple indexing query. It's nothing which can go wrong there, actually. So that's actually way, 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 way easier. But I also wanted to keep what works well. And one thing which I think works really well is actually the indexing configuration. So the way you can specify which properties to index and in which way to index that. So it's using the exact same machinery. So that means it's fully compatible as well uh, with your node types configuration and with your settings uh, you're using. Yeah. And then was then there's still the topic with the user interface. Um, who is how are you using uh, you, how are you building your search UI? So I guess some people are using the plugin, right? Who's using the plugin usually? A few, yeah. It's a bit restricted. So who's running your own UI? Who has cursed because that's so much work? A few, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this package does not include a UI, um, but. It's actually really hard to build a generic UI because you have so many different features. So what I tried to do here is actually building a separate package, which is some kind of UI boilerplate, which you copy into your project, and then you start modifying it to your needs. And I'm going to show that in a bit. So that is this uh, boilerplate package. It might be that this package is not open source yet. I'm not fully sure yet if I forgot to push or I, if I pushed it in the last days. I'm, I'm not sure yet, but I will push that in the upcoming days. So. I would just like to show that um, um, because that's something I'm really happy about. So this Lightweight Elastic Search package, uh, one thing I really tried hard um, because, <laughs> you know, um, um, the this package, what I did differently, I first wrote the documentation before implementing, and that was a really good idea. So you see the readme is actually really long. You see the scroll bar on the right side. and. Yeah, don't worry about that because actually it tries to explain like the goals for and limitations and says how do you need to start Elasticsearch in which mode because this is all the times I personally have to look that up if, if I start from scratch, you know, I just don't know that. The indexing configuration is actually just copy pasted from the from the other adapter. It's just there so that we have it all in. So that's so actually this configuration is all done by the others. So and then if you want to have a search, actually, it, it, this is an example uh, which you just copy paste into your project and can start modifying it. So it's actually, you know, we have really bigger examples in here. And I just can explain that a bit. But um, um, basically, you start copy pasting that in your project and then you can start um, modifying it to your needs. So as an example, what we are doing, that's just a normal fusion component. Um, the Elasticsearch request is actually these two lines. So we have Elasticsearch.create request, then we say for the site, and then we have to spare the specify the query of the Elasticsearch request. And the query is just, so that's just structured like the Elasticsearch API. So it's directly modeled after that. So you can, um, then you can specify this query, which you build up here. And so then you have some stuff for creating a full text query, for instance, um, and then specifying it with the query parameter. Um, then you have the, the listings. And you can easily modify your markup in here just as you need that, because you know the, the markup in the search is just really project specific and it's just way more way to way more um, effort usually to adjust it to every single project and override stuff than to just write it from scratch on yourself. So that's why uh, this is doing it a bit differently. The caching configuration is in here already, which works. Um, so because that's something which people usually get wrong. Um, and for rendering the results, then uh, we have a prototype, which is this case statement. And then you can pretty easily add conditions, basically. And one preparation we've already done is something like an index discriminator. So that is for separating the different kinds of data you have in your index. So basically nodes is one part, but if you have jobs from an external system, that's another part and so on and so on. So 
actually, it's actually cool. You know, I have I didn't need to prepare lots of presentation because I could just open the README and read out the README. So um, there are some other examples how you can write queries. Um, so for instance, you can. Um, so that was the easy example we've just done. A more complex one would actually be uh, a full text query and then filtering, additionally filtering the results down. So that's what you usually use for, use for faceting, for instance. You can also use a Boolean query. Um, and of course, you need to know the semantics of the Elasticsearch Boolean query, but you need to know that anyways during debugging. So there is no way around that, I, I'm afraid, I guess, for more complex cases. But the idea is we don't want to get in your way uh, writing these kind of queries. And if you want to build more complex queries, then please write custom e helpers for your specific logic in PHP and um, handle them through. And then we have aggregations and faceting. Um, and it explains basically how this needs to work. And then I've included some diff here, how you need to adjust your example so that you get faceting in here. Um, so it's a bit more complex here. And you see like more than half of So actually, it's just adding four lines. It's removing that, this this and this line, and the rest is actually documentation explaining what's going on so that you hopefully have a more easy start. And please send pull requests to that. If, you're, if you feel that is not understandable, then please just let us collaboratively improve that. Um, and you can also copy paste the full example that's included in here for your convenience, so, so you can expand that. So um, um, I've done some readme uh, markdown building magic, whatever. There's some script building that from examples and rendering the diff, <laughs> but uh, actually that's quite nice. Yeah, result highlighting is the same thing. You can, ag again, you have to modify the query a bit. You have to add an highlighting part in here, which is shown here. And um, then there's examples how to index other data. So there is a custom indexer in here, for instance, and that's all you need to do. So you need to specify the name of the custom index, like FAQ, for instance. Um, then you um, create the index with the mapping. Then you index your document. So that's just indexing a single document. And then you need to do some cleanup. And that is what you can simply do in your command controller without any stuff. The command controller is actually also included in here if you want to copy paste that. And then it explains how you need to adjust the queries as well on, on the other side. I, I'm not going to show that here. And then there's also a more complete example, like putting it all together. Um, this one, yeah, which shows it all together. It also has some ideas how to debug that and, and so on. And um, so that is the, the, the main package. And I just really quickly want to show the, just need to see which project I'm going to show that. I think this one. Um, uh, is the is the um, Elasticsearch uh, UI example? Let's just switch to presentation mode. Ooh, where is it? They are moving this around. I have the feeling. View appear. Ah, it's now an appearance. Uh, presentation mode. Oops, wonderful. So let's just see. Blah, 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 blah. Send. Uh, that's the example. Here. Right. So what is the example doing? Actually, it, it contains just. Uh, really a bit of fusion. It, it's just, you know, a structure we are doing for the results. And actually, uh, this is very opinionated. So what this is actually doing, it is, it is adding, it is using uh, Tailwind JS for, for the styling because that is really easily adjustable. And it is using uh, Alpine JS for the interactivity. So actually, this is doing like client side reloading. So that's why you see these uh, uh, this is this stuff like click prevent and so on, so for for a more interactive uh, experience. Uh, thanks for to Wakemeister, by the way, where I was able to try that out for the first time. And actually, this is like this package is um, is a spin-off of that, and uh, where I just tried to document what 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 happens there. So um, again, I've I've tried to document it really a lot. So so. Again, the code here is uh, very much just, just look how much comments are there. And then there is some logic. There's some logic when you want to reset stuff and so on. Um, so it's actually like 300 lines, but it's more like 150 at least are documentation again. That's again used for you should copy paste that. You should adjust it to your needs. And, and then uh, because it doesn't make any sense to, to, sub, to create uh, new versions of that um, in your project because it's it will be customized anyways. Um, so that's why it's much better to see it as a kind of boilerplate to get started. 
Right. Um, I think um, that is actually what I want, wanted to show. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to questions and then the NEOS Award. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Sebastian, for this inspiring talk. Um, yeah, next up, as we told you, is the NEOS Awards. So please go over there. But first, we got two questions for the first talk. I don't know the answers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, should we skip But you can both? try to answer. <laughs> Stefan comes to help, maybe. Okay. Ah, the sync store thingy, that's your stuff. Yeah. So uh, where's the limit of sync and why uh, not for larger sites once it's stable? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tested it once uh, with a site with, uh, what, what was that? Um, I think four, no, 40 country dimensions and 10 language dimensions and it indexed. <laughs> It, it did That's work, impressive. but I did not measure it. Yeah. Okay, uh, the second question is, uh, how does uh, Sync store its data? Any special requirements on that? It's stored on the file system. And it's, uh, yeah, fast file system makes sense, but you also can store it on the cloud. So it's built in to have cloud storage, just for the amount of data, because it creates a lot of data. All right, thank you, Stefan, for answering these questions. So, um, yeah, like Eric said, uh, this concludes the Beyond Elastic Search talk. Give a big applause for Stefan and Sebastian, of course. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. And